Hello, I'm Liam and I'm a researcher at the University of Oxford and I study insects. Today we're going to be thinking all about bees, the different species and the different places that they live. We're also going to think about why bees are in trouble and we've got a little project for one of the ways that you can help bees at home. Did you know there are over 270 species of bee in the UK? Now you might be familiar with the honeybee, the one that provides us with delicious honey that I like to put on my toast. But this is just one species, and actually it's kept by people in hives. So it's a little bit like the insect equivalent of a cow or a chicken. So what about the wild bees? Well, there are 25 species of bumblebees. These are a little bit like honeybees in that they're what we call social. So they live in a colony with the queen and workers. Bumblebees like to live in lots of different places. Some species like to live uh, in holes underground. So they love things like old mouse nests, and you quite might find them under your garden shed. Other species of bumblebee like to nest in long grass or piles of vegetation, so you might find them in areas of your lawn which are left unmown, or in compost heaps. There's even one species of bumblebee, which is a more recent arrival in this country, called the tree bumblebee, which likes to nest higher up. So it loves things like holes in trees, and bird boxes, and even the eaves of houses or people's lofts, so keep an eye out for that one. So the other 250 plus species of bee in this country are what we call solitary bees. So these don't have colonies with queens and workers like the bumblebees and the honeybee, but rather they have individual females which do all the work by themselves. So these females will go to flowers, collect pollen and then bring it back to a nest which they will make lots of different individual cells. And each cell they'll put a little pile of pollen and lay an egg on it and then that then hatches, the larva eats the pollen and grows into an adult bee. Now most of the time that will then wait until the following year before it comes out itself. Now solitary bees are a very diverse group. There's all sorts of different types of solitary bee and some of them are absolutely tiny and just look like little flies at first glance and others are much larger, even larger than a bumblebee like the carpenter bees. They also live in a whole range of different places. Lots of solitary bees make nests underground. Uh, a big group of these we call the mining bees and you might see those nesting in patches of bare soil or even in lawns and sometimes you can find little volcanoes of, of dirt which is the uh, soil that they've excavated out when they were digging their nest. Other bees are what we call cavity nesters so they like to nest in any kind of hole and these are normally higher up. This includes uh, mason bees and leaf cutter bees. Now mason bees when they find a suitable hole will again go collect pollen in a similar way to the mining bee and they'll put it into the hole and then they'll separate off each individual cell with a little bit of mud. Leaf cutter bees do a very similar thing but instead of using mud they actually chew off little bits of leaf which they use to wrap up the pollen and the egg. And finally there's a massive group of solitary bees, lots of different species, what we call cuckoo bees. Now these let other species of bee do all the hard work for them and then sneak into the nest at the last minute and lay their own egg on the pollen. This egg then hatches quickly and eats all the pollen before the original bee ha gets a chance to hatch and eat it itself. So it's a little bit like its namesake, the cuckoo bird. Most species of bee in this country actually have an associated cuckoo bee. So, one of the things that we can do in our garden to help bees is to provide habitats for them to live. And one really easy way that we can provide a habitat is to make a bee hotel. So that's what we're going to have a go at doing next. Hello, I'm Caitlin. I'm a community artist and this is my assistant Jay. Hi. Today we will be showing you one of the ways you can help bees whilst getting creative and making your own bee hotel. Now we're going to show you what your hotel could look like. We've got some examples that we made already. 
can show this one, Jane. Mm. So you can have it in a tin, little bits of bamboo and a nice little string decoration, which is quite nice. Or if you don't have a tin, you can use a lovely coloured bit of plastic bottle. This one's made with a plastic bottle yeah. and bamboo inside. This one is made with paper tubes if you don't have any bamboo. So there's lots of different ways to do these. Next, we're going to show you the things that you're going to need in order to make your B Hotel. Jane, do you want to hold yeah. that up? So these are some of the things you're going to need. And we'll show you them as well. First of all, you're going to need some sort of cylinder. So you can have a plastic bottle, a normal one, or a nice tin. Or a can, or it could be something else that you find. And you'll need bamboo up to five metres long. But don't worry, if you don't have bamboo, you can use instead paper or thin card. A little bit of modelling clay, this is optional, so don't worry if you don't have any. You will need scissors and tape and a ruler, string or wool. Be like this or you can have the only thinner stuff, you can use that as well. And if you are using bamboo, you will also need a small saw and some sandpaper. Now you can pause the video for a minute while you go and find the things you need and we'll see you in a moment. So now it's time to get making. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> so first of all, choose your cylinder. If it's a plastic bottle, uh, get an adult to help you with cutting the ends off it. So, I'm going to make a hole through. some string or wool through the middle. If you're um, using a Pringles tube instead then ask an adult to cut that in half for you because they're a bit tougher. Next you're going to need lots of long thin tubes to put inside your cylinder. So they could be like this rolled paper or thin cardboard or they could be sawed and sanded bamboo. First job you need to do before you make anything is to measure your cylinder. So Jay's going to measure ours. 10 centimetres. Okay, then you need to take two centimetres off that measurement. Whatever your measurement is, take away two centimetres. So what's so ours? Be eight. Eight. And write down that measure, cylinder me measurement with two centimetres taken away. Okay, yours will be a different size probably. Now you've done that, 
um, we're going to show you how to make the paper tubes. Now, first thing you need to do is use that figure you've just written down and you're going to measure it onto your piece of paper. So, mark it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're going to cut up your paper so you get long thin strips that are the right width. going to need to make loads of them to roll loads of little paper tubes. Just going to roll it up with your fingers and what's important is that the diameter, so the measurement across the end of the circle of your tube, is between half a centimetre, so that's five millimetres and, and ten millimetres and ten millimetres or one centimetre because you want different sizes of diameters so that different sizes and sorts of bees can use your bee home. So when you've rolled it up and it's between half a centimetre and a centimetre, then we're going to just put a little bit of tape to hold it. simple and you're going to make loads and loads of these and as you make them you're going to put them into your cylinder and when you've got loads and loads made you'll start to have enough should we test it do you want to hold it upside down it's really full and if you hold it upside down they don't fall out yeah. So if you're using bamboo, um, we're going to show you how to get the correct lengths. So find your piece of paper that you wrote down the number on and you're just going to measure and mark that length all the way along your bits of bamboo until you've used it all up. And then next you're going to get an adult to show you how to saw safely and you're going to saw up your lengths of bamboo. So, get very careful of our fingers and we're going to use a really secure surface. saw through all of your bits of bamboo. Now when you've sawed enough bits to fill your whole cylinder, next important thing is going to be to sand them. Because if there's bits sticking out they can cut the bees wings. Yes, so sad. you need to sand both ends of your bamboo so it's properly smooth. you're going to have a look at your bamboo and see if it's got a hole all the way through the middle or if it's blocked at one end this one's got a hole all the way through the middle this one is blocked at one end 
and open at the other, which is perfect. If you have a bamboo that is blocked at both ends, like this one, just take something like a pencil or something thin, like a stick or a bit of wire, and just poke one end. So there's a hole in one end, but the other end is blocked. Now, after you've done this, it's time to stuff your cylinder until it's completely full. So, and remember to keep your bit string in if you're using a plastic bottle. Let's get that in. Now, oh, there we go. Now, this one is really, really well stuffed. And have a look at each end. You'll see some of the bamboos will be holy all the way through. And those bamboos, if you have any clay or modeling dough, just stuff some clay in one end. So choose which end is gonna be your covered end and stuff some clay in the end of the bamboos that are I've got holes all the way through so that they've got one end blocked. Now don't worry if you haven't got any clay that's fine. What you could do instead is use a bit of cardboard like this, draw around it <laughs> and then Jay, if you can get me some sellotape, you can stuff a cardboard end into your cylinder and tape it in place just to block one end. So, put it in like this and just tape it in nice and firmly. One more bit. Now, of course, if you're using something like a tin can, or end of a Pringles tube, it's got an end on anyway, so you don't need to worry about this. This is just for people who are using a cylinder like a bottle that is open at both ends. So just keep taping it till it's firmly on. And then we're gonna hand over to Liam next and find out more. And we'll see you back at the decorating stage.